looking to potentially change that, but actually going to the, the draft, we see Navi bans out Johanna for that exact reason. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, pretty much most people who play competitively, as well as just Hero League uh, people at home, if you get Johanna and Leoric on a single team, that's pretty much a key for the opponent not to even try, not to even bother. Like, those two heroes together will clear the skeletons yeah. in, in milliseconds. And I almost just expect a guaranteed ban out of Leoric here. He's just such a powerful hero. Pirates are really thinking about this surrounding around and uh, thinking about this draft because it, it means so much. We thought Kael'thas, also very powerful. Jaina, just any hero that has a lot of AoE power yeah. is good. But one thing that we actually saw in Korea, Grubby, oh, there's yeah, Leo well, Ban. Well done, Leo. <laughs> Leo, Leo Ban, was Tychus being played here. And that's yes. because of the power of Odin. Yeah, yeah they, they recognize that every... Uh, two minutes or so, you've got that uh, power spike necessity when you're fighting over right. it. They're like, hey, guess what? Like, Sergeant Hammer is cool and all, but like, Odin has even more oomph in yeah. a few seconds. It's just the, the splash on that that line going through the entire battle, if you can protect that Tychus in the back line, is really cool. But with those two warriors being banned out, no surprise, first pick Uther. Yeah, Uther, Jaina, Leoric, Johanna are some of the very most contested and top picked heroes. And there's really no way you can go wrong with Uther. Hmm. Like, he has a bit of counterplay. You can take sustained damage dealer like Nazebo or Zagara. But then again, not really. The good Uther players are able to crank out even a lot of area of effect healing. Okay, well, with with the Warriors getting kind of secluded here, I think it makes a lot of sense to go for Muradin early in this draft. Find a Warrior that your team likes. Uh, Do you want to get a second Warrior? Uh, maybe, right? But the thing is, is Zeratul still on the table, too? And it's uh, so yeah. hard to, like, forget that the power of Void Prison. Yeah, like, Zeratul is kind of a hero that plays outside the realm of mortals. Like, he's kind of... <laughs> he's just a god. He doesn't follow the rules. Right, he doesn't. Right? No. It's like... He teleports... Even if you're behind, if you can set up a good Void Prison, mm. but they don't take him. Now, this is interesting. In they're, game one... They're kind of counterpicking. Yeah, th <laughs> this, is, this is kind of flipping hands here. Yeah. So, uh. what they're saying so far, the story they're crafting, seems to be, we want to fight you right before the Shrine, mm -hmm. not at the Shrine per se. Still, Starfall is really good zoning and damage tool at the Shrine itself, but... They might want to do some fights before that. Make sure they have a numerical advantage going into it. Get some pick-offs. And this is very surprising. Abathur and Jaina. Now, Abathur's story here on Navi's side is to say, we're going to try and drag out the fight over the objective for as long as possible, while Abathur can potentially soak experience of up to two lanes simultaneously. He can also soak one lane by putting his body there and still help out in the team fight. So they want to have a more slow-paced objective struggle. This is so interesting, though. To, to prioritize Abathur this early in the draft, it's special, um, I was it? worried that Pirates was going to really try to ban them out of Warriors. But no, they're just going to say, Ugh, the power of Kerrigan is, is quite good here, especially paired with Abathur and Jaina. Uh, and then the ban there on Kael'thas. Again, Zeratul not being picked up yet blows my <laughs> mind, but I, I like it, man. <laughs> yeah, like, Zeratul has a bit of counterplay. Like, if you take him early, the enemy suddenly mm, has true. triple warrior, Uther, and a damage dealer. He can have a lot of trouble finding some kind of way in to actually deal the damage. But still, he offers so much control. Okay, well, time for Pip to pick their next two heroes. They just have the pseudo support Taronda and Muradin, so they're probably going to want to pick up another support. Uh, they could probably leave that for their last pick, yeah. considering Uther's already been picked up here. Like, we have so much assassin and warrior pick so far, mm -hmm. that if you take a healer now, you just give a free pass to get the best of the remainder of the pack in those rolls. So, what could we see here? Maybe another warrior? Yeah, Material, I like the idea of an. Anubarak, Arthas, and then a damage hmm. dealer. Even Sonia is very powerful in this map. When you consider just the power of Whirlwind for yeah. the clear and the wave, and she's starting to rise in the in this current meta. And, and that's something they should be concerned about, considering Navi has that Abathur hat too. That's true. Um, and Uther. Mm, since she yeah. kind of plays like a melee assassin, they have the potential to pick her up here. It's they actually do. a very good point. They have double support already. One they have all these stuns to pair with the Ancient Spear, so that's a really strong initiation. Removing reverberation from the opponent's counterpicks against true. a melee hard hitter. 
And they're going to go for Vala. Um, Strafe, really good heroic, really good hero in general. She has a, a strong base kit. And she has the ability to vault out of a lot of situations. And you know what? With, with the Rhaegar pick being here this early, it just leaves their last pick flexible. They can respond to whatever Navi picks up here. They have a strong support, and their last pick, pick is just going to be responsive. Yeah, they can take anything here. So Navi, looking to pick up a warrior, most likely. We could see... Tassadar and a melee assassin. We do have that Zeratul now, but now it looks like they'll probably need a warrior. How surprised would you be if they went for Shadow Assault, and no. Symbiote Hat, oh Divine my. Shield? Oh my goodness. You're that, getting me too excited, Greg. That could work. It could. We've <laughs> seen it done before, and it's very powerful. But still, the power of Void Prison, you can never forget about how good it is. Um, if they go for Anubarak and a Cocoon Rhaegar, they could burst down oh two goodness. people with Shadow Assault and Uther. <laughs> <laughs> It's possible. It's in the realm of possibilities. One pick left. Probably going to go for a warrior here for that last pickup. Uh, Warriors, Leoric, Johanna have been banned. Murden has been taken. So a noob, oh, they do go for Tyrael. Okay. All right. Well, that could, it could still be the plan. Yeah. The Shadow oh, Assault, definitely. extra shields, judgment probably. I don't think you go Sanctification when you're already have Uther. Yeah, that would be a little bit overkill, I think. I mean, uh, this is a good map for it, but... Uh, whoa! whoa! Okay. Lost Vikings. Now, that is their answer to Abathur. Yeah. They're saying, you're not the only one that can soak up to two lanes while this goes on. So they've taken a lot of pressure off themselves, Pip, by taking Vikings. They don't have to uh, be as worried about the passage of time. Otherwise, they need to make things happen in 20 seconds tops, or Abathur will pull too far ahead. Now it's kind of flipped. Vikings can soak <laughs> even more than Abathur. It's true. The, you know, the best in the game when it comes to that uh, field. But this also opens up the doors for them to use Miranda, Murden, Tyrande, to roam around a little bit more. They can ah. be going between lanes, trying to find people to pick off. You can even use the Vikings as bait in certain situations. So there's a lot of cool play that can happen with this hero. And they're already facing fewer bodies on the field for the opponent. Normally, normally Zeratul is the king of Rome's, but now actually they're going to have a lot of people to go around and uh, meet a few isolated heroes. Grubby, I have to talk about yeah. these homemade jerseys. They just <laughs> took the t-shirts and a Sharpie and they wrote their logo and they drew their logo. It's actually one of the coolest things I've ever seen in all my years <laughs> in esports. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I yeah. Well, they do have Murd in this game. One I of wonder their if this picks. is what they mean with Smexy style, smart and sexy. <laughs> we can make our own shirts and draw on them, and we don't give a damn. <laughs> That's Smexy if I ever thought something was Smexy. Looking a little tense there, perhaps focused. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot on the line here. This is their chance to be sitting in a great spot here in the group stage. Now, of course, today, Friday, is just group stage of the event. We'll be, we'll be covering Group A all day. Group B is going on with all our community streams. And then the, uh, the big full-fledged event all launches tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow and Sunday is going to be quite a spectacle with uh, the groups that advance today. Well... Not, not everything will be decided in the groups today. Today we'll have four out of the five matches and there'll be one more decider match tomorrow. So we're setting the stage for the stage matches tomorrow. And of course, two teams at the end of this tournament will advance to BlizzCon. So this being the Europe Championship, this is it. You're going to represent your region if, you able to, if you're able to qualify for BlizzCon, the ultimate world championship, the final stage here for 2015. Yeah, and if you make it there, it's not just... I don't think these... If you ask most of the players, I don't think they're going to say it's the prize money that we're fighting for here. It's like pride. The chance to make it to BlizzCon and to represent your team, your sponsors, or maybe even thanks to it, pick up additional team or sponsor is going to be absolutely huge. And this is it. This is one of the matches that can have them get to that most prestigious of stages. Well, we'll see if Pirates can come back here in game number two on Infernal Shrines or if Na'Vi will close it all out. That's the setup. Na'Vi versus Pirates currently 1-0 in favor of Na'Vi. All right. Here we see on the left side we have Team Na'Vi there with JPL on Jaina, Eternal on the Zeratul. We've got Tyrael played by Alex the Proji, Schwimpy. Borrowing away with there on that Abathur and Splendor to support on Judgment Uther. The only way to ride Uther nowadays for the non-plebs. <laughs> we have a bit of a, a weird ambush here on their own side of the map. Yeah, and on the right side, of course, that is Pirates in Pajamas trying to bring it back here. Starting out here in Infernal Shrines, this is really 
one of the more interesting battlegrounds. Being a three lane battleground that has three shrines that can spawn, it's all about getting the takedowns on the minions that spawn within this region. If you get 30 before your opponents, you will summon a Punisher, which actually prioritizes attacking enemy heroes <laughs> instead of structures like most mechanics do. It's so surprising when he suddenly jumps on a hero. It's still picked at random. This may change in the future, mm -hmm. but you can kind of bait out their jumps and stunts and damage dealing, but it can be very shocking when he singles you out and uh, focuses you. Look at this. Four members waiting for anyone to pass through here. Viking soaking all three lanes. We have Eric in the top. The middle lane has Olaf and Balog here for the link clear in the bottom. And they throw out the Lunar Flare. If they connect it on JPL, they're going to go for the kill. But Eternal is looking for an opportunity himself. Yeah, Schwimpy offered too much information to his team already. He had a lot of toxic nest usage. And suddenly, Pirates of Pajamas realized they're not going to get any early takedowns. The Lunar Flare was a very... Um, far-fetched hope. I don't think they really expected to hit it, but they had already set their mind on just wanting to pick up their uh, clear the wave and maybe get some siege damage. Okay, well that first shrine spawning pretty early here. It's going to be here in the top lane and they have to rotate it up. Eight seconds until it is available to be activated. Zypho, the lone hero in the top lane right now. Interestingly, Navi has picked up a globe regeneration talents on every single hero. Uh, they're now coming in here, pushing in. We have the initiative for Team Pirates in Pajamas. I don't think that Navi can actually make this last too long. We have Viking in every single lane, so they need to do something very quickly. Keep in mind that none of the skeleton warriors that you kill currently has any advantage unless you get the full 30. So if all you're planning is to stay here a bit and disengage, you don't need to focus the skeletons at all. You should try to focus on doing damage on your adversary. Yeah. Pretty late uh, Hunter's Mark thrown on the Alex of Pro-G, so they weren't really able to capitalize on the bonus damage. And re already, we see they're trying to turn this around, but the Lunar Flare does connect out Druin's Might, will get Alex of Pro-G out, and a lot of damage being turned out in the back line from the Jaina and Zeratul. Uh, the tank's taking a lot of damage here. Alex the Pro-G has got Ooh. to pull back. will actually get taken out in a rather clumsy and slow way. Wow, but, but the trade Burden, He's so low, yeah, the oh. Frostbolt does connect, and it looks like it's actually going to be Navi picking up that first uh, Punisher in this game. Yeah, uh, the, the Merlin takedown, their continued uh, yeah, tenacity here has uh, given them it. XP is very similar, Meridin, uh, Tyrion, sorry, the Lost Vikings and Abathur fulfilling that role to perfection. In and the now... We see the bait out of the boss. That's actually a tactic where players will try to have the boss jump over the gate because it's so easy to take him down with the damage from the fort. Yeah, really well done there. I mean, they blew it up in, in, a, in a matter of moments and really, you know, just took care of the advantage that it did exist there on the side of Navi. Oh my goodness, Vamp Assault. That is a very uncommon talent to see here on uh, Leor, or excuse me, Tyrael. Yeah, 25% uh, lifesteal on auto attacks. Uh, not relying on the heals from Uther. Uh, I think most of the heals from Uther are expected to go to Jaina and Zeratul. So he's like, I don't need the amplified healing just for your heals. I'm, I can take care of myself. I still find it an odd pick. It definitely interesting, especially when you th consider the power of Uther as a healer, but it's going to make him just hyper-sustainable, especially when you're fighting over all those minions in the front line. Uh, Balog did end up falling in the bottom lane, so that's a, it's a nice, a nice win here. Wow, Vikings actually went for the extra siege damage on Baylock and Mercenary Lord. So not picking up Bright, but still wanting to offer extra damage to his mercs. You see that right now in yeah. Zypho with Eric there, giving bonus damage uh -oh. to the siege giants. It's not too impactful, it's mostly good when ignored. Same as Promote. Yeah, but the fact that they, it is now like kind of paired with uh, superiority, they merge those two talents together. It's been such a more interesting talent. We see yeah. it picked up more and more often, and they're already getting another mercenary camp here in the bottom lane. They're going to power through before this mule, which oh. is picked up by Abther, can heal it up. Yeah, and look at that positioning by Zypho on the Baylock there, already offering that extra damage, even so from that smart. range, from the safety of the bush. Yeah, very smart. Nice usage. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. And this offers a lot of pressure. JPL on Jaina actually has to come down here and deal with this. Abathur alone cannot do it. That means the middle will have some incentive for Pip to have uh, more people here, more bodies on the field. And this makes uh, the Abathur, every time you take up the walls, Abathur is far less safe, right? It's a lot easier to just kind of step in there, try to get the blow up, try to land a Lunar Flare to try to destroy the Abathur quickly as that hero is so squishy. We have the uh, extra bonus damage from Jaina on level 7, not choosing for Frost Armor there against any auto attacks. 
Yeah, but already 23 uh, skulls have been picked up here. Super KG going to get very loud. Super G gets the heal with the Abathur hat, trying to apply a bit of damage, but he's just taking too much in return. Needs to leave here, just dashing away with the shield, and just two more skulls are needed. It's going to be a Punisher going to the side of Pirates in Pajamas. Yeah, because of those siege signs there at the bottom with the Vikings uh, supporting them, Jaina came too late. They had too little early momentum into it, so it was almost a foregone conclusion that they were going to get it. Once again, they're the bait out of having the boss jump jump over. This can be risky later, but for the first two Punishers, you definitely want to manage it that way, as it's already taking a lot of damage. You see, the first two are not too impactful yet. Uh, a lot of props need to go. Oh, oh, the Punisher gets uh, I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, a big props to Eternal for rotating and taking out Balog in the bottom lane, denying some of that soak that the Lost Vikings have been providing. Oh, yeah. But losing Uther there, that kind of stops the advantage. They had full level lead for Pirates in Pajamas, and they have those heroic abilities. Yeah, Longboat Raid, Starfall, Strafe, Avatar, and Ancestral Healing. No surprises there whatsoever. And uh, nice map awareness here for Abathur. Super KG looking for him. He did burrow to the top lane to now resume soaking up there. Now, Na Navi is playing a very slow game here. Like This is not their power spike yet. First of all, Zerato has no Void Prison, which is super key. Mm -hmm. And the other most important part, as you well know, Wormhole at level 13. Zerato barely playable at all without Wormhole at the highest level because you cannot be aggressive. People are too good here at this level to see that blur and to zone them out from doing anything. So they're playing a slow game. So they're picking up Mule on Abathur. Nice takedown there on Eric. Yeah. So they want to draw it out and protect as much as possible until they get to level 13, 16. You know, I like the Mule pickup here a lot uh, when you just consider it like Lost Vikings, right? They have a lot of split push capability. With this hero, I mean, we already see multiple talents and with emphasis on the split push. Yeah, that's so the mule is the right response for sure. That's true. Mercenary Lord, the Baylock splash damage at one, explosive shots. Yeah. And now that it, they've kind of, you know, even things out, they have their heroic abilities. One thing we do need to mention is just the power of Ring of Frost. If you manage to land a big Void Prison in these fights, Ring of Frost it can just decimate your opponents. And, you know, it's something that's starting to rise in popularity ever since MGA a few months back, where Korea really showed us. I mean, MVP Black made some ridiculous plays against every team they played against with Ring of Frost. Uh, it's picked up a lot of popularity. Yeah, it, it has decent damage, but also that slow effect in the chill. Very, very effective. Now uh, we have uh, actually Baylock dying there to uh, Eternal there on the Zeratul going down. We've still got a much closer progress to level 13, but that won't happen during this objective. It's all going to be about the fight, and it's breaking out in all hell. Oh, the Void Prison goes out. The Judgment, he actually gets caught into that uh, Void Prison, and the Judgment's going to be very late. Eric goes down in the battle. Shrimpy on the clone, trying to get the kill on Vala, but it looks like the clone will expire, and now JPL is in a terrible spot. Uh, they get to Ronda, but they pay for it in Uther. Smexy style, they're running away from Alex the Brody to Nest, actually taking him down by Abathur's foresight. <laughs> Nicely done in the longboat raid, trying to clean it up, but no, it's going to be a Punisher in a big team fight win for Navi. Oh, gee, that was the slowest judgment I've ever seen. <laughs> Did you see Jaina being highlighted all throughout? Oh, sorry, uh, Toronto. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, that's the power of uh, Void Prison for or against your team. Yeah. All right, Vala taking Spell Shield there to prevent against that burst from Jaina and Judgment. Yeah, and that's going to be the first fort going down on the side of Pirate. So Navi getting back on the board, actually taking the lead in terms of experience after being a full level down earlier in this game. Still pushing uh -oh. in with the boss, jumps in for the stun, will get a lot of damage on Merlin, but he was able to jump out in time. Almost like a disengaged strafe there without any hope of actually killing someone. Just adding damage on the boss and the enemy, and that has been defended. Yeah, nicely done. I mean, Strafe using those situations, you know it's going to be a little while before the next team fight. Only 45 seconds, so it's back off cooldown. Well worth the use of that cooldown there. Right. I mean, it's like, uh, you can ask yourself, why do we fight? Like, how surprising would it be, Jake, if all, like, why both teams... Why do we teams, fight, Robbie? Why do we fight? <laughs> no, but, like, why would they all meet in the middle now and have, have a big fight? Unless you exactly. can get a trap or positional advantage, a surprise. But generally, people don't just meet, like, in quick match in solo queue, like, let's fight just for the sake of it. True. Let's meet at middle and fight. So yeah. her, her cooldown is going to be back, like you said. All right. Well, they're just kind of pushing out the lanes, cleaning up. Lost Vikings continue to have that great power of just soak. They, it's it's such a nice thing to have, especially when your opponents have Abathur, to just really be able to throw a single Viking into that top lane and never really have to go up there. They've had this massive presence in the bottom lane for quite a while. 
and it's it's perfectly fine. But what an even game, and much better for Pirates in Pajamas than the last one. But they're pretty much trailing all game. They actually have a bit of an experienced lead here. Equal uh, forts and town still up. Uh, the next objective will be spawning very, very soon. Where is it going to be? It's rather random. Okay, well, Alex going to use Aldrin's might to get out of there. Murden just, you know, checking it out after they got eyes on with the Sentinel a bit earlier. The best for Navi would be if it spawned at the bottom because they have bruisers pushing top. That's actually going to be the middle. All right, so Vala going to try to clean out that Fallen Shaman, which will continue to summon minions as long as it stays alive. That's why you see the throwing Hunter's Mark Lunar Flare just trying to blow that up. Now they can rotate down to fight over this middle shrine, which will be available in 10 seconds. All right, everyone is getting in position here. The nests are revealing where Smexy style was hiding there on the Rhaegar. Zypho has been revealed as well. Uh, Eric, they're narrowly escaping the burst damage from Eternal Zerato. This is going to be really hard uh, for pirates, I think. Now that Tyrael has imposing well from level 13, um, that's gonna you can you can really stop a lot of damage from being done. Eric actually falls early. Eternal finds him in the back line. Lunar flare thrown beautifully, oh. but that void prison is massive. Ring of Frost on almost everybody. Smexy oh. Stoke is absolutely bursted. Insane judgment on the strafe will cancel that. Vala has been deleted as well. We, Rhaegar and Vala are down. Murden barely gets away, actually. Wow, oh, man. What Beautiful a, Wombo. What a, what a play. That's the power of VP. I mean, they yeah. were even leaving Eric here to try to scout out Zeratul, and it, just, it was like they didn't respond. Zeratul killed Eric, casually walked up, and threw down the yeah. massive Void Prison. It is true. That shouldn't happen, right? No, they should be responding. I mean, if you have Eric there, use that advantage. They have him there for a reason, to get the vision. Yeah. They must come in from multiple angles, the top and the right side, the east side, east and north, but they were all there clustered together at the mm -hmm. east side. The easiest Void Prison ever. And it, it Led showed into the, ring of frost. the power and the judgment follow up for that last take. The Punisher once again here for Navi, starting to propel forward. Just a, a slight advantage. Vikings are really helping deal with that, but as the fort falls, the advantage will push even further forward, and now they're going up to the top lane where Baylog will get blown up. Yep, uh, Baylog, uh, pretty much not enough escapes in the entire world to dodge the attacks of four concerted uh, heroes. Well, you see Abathur picking up the slow and venomed spikes, which will help when it's on Tyrael or Zeratul, slow down the enemy, make it much easier to, uh, to take them out. So this is like a, a really interesting situation where if they can actually blow up Tyrael, it's going to be quite favorable. Imposing will is going to be kind of a crucial part of this, this matchup. Now that True Shot Aura has been picked up for Taronda, all these auto attack heroes, Lost Vikings, there's three of them. Muradin does, you know, decent auto attacks, but really it's Taronda and Vala. And throwing all those together with True Shot, it's a lot of damage. I think uh, Longboat's raid also counts as it's auto true, attacks yeah, true. with True Shot, so gets bonus damage as well. But also gets slowed down by uh, Tyrael then. So. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, all right, well, we'll see the bottom knights being taken here. Uh, the Bruiser Camp. A trap has been set. But they showed themselves early, and there's able to be a disengage. Tyrael misses. Oh. The Lunar Flare misses. The Stormbolt was used, and it leads to no significant damage whatsoever. You must disengage after using such important spells and not getting anything out of them. I felt like they were going to set a trap, but then they suddenly just kind of started running without any lead. Ooh. Eternal, though! That is big. 100% to zero death. That's huge. Yeah, that's that's a big play. And now they have a 50-second window where it's a 4v5 situation. And considering the enemy team has Zeratul, or excuse me, Abathur on their team, they don't have that same kind of oomph in their, their composition I right say now. just push in, try to get a keep. Like, you, you want to put pressure, but there's no pressure like taking down a keep. So you got to try. Like, you can take down a fort, you'll get it for free, but it, it's not really anything huge. So I like their decision to push into the keep. Question where they have enough, actually, damage to take enough down here. They don't even get a tower. Yeah, JPL, just beautiful zone, throwing Blizzard out, just throwing a few Frost Bolts, and, you know, just waiting them to push into this keep, so... I would have liked to see them go much harder on that gate. They were kind of poking it. It was very passive. It's, like, not confident play right now. But they're playing safe. Yeah, it's right? smart. And I don't know if it's smart. It, it is safe. <laughs> uh, but they will get a guaranteed objective. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. Thing is, is will they be able to take advantage of this? Now, this Punisher will walk down that bottom lane. The fort is still standing, but it is vulnerable. Completely exposed. 
they can push down with it with their team, but they need to worry about clumping for that Void Prism. Yes, We've exactly. that be so crucial in these fights, and Zeratul is very much alive once again. So this is going to be the key moment of the game. Nobody is level 20 yet, and the fight will not get into a level 20 situation yet at the gate. Now, when the boss is attacking, uh, when the boss is actually attacking near the keep, that's when level 20 will be within arm's reach as Abathur is doing that. And if Navi is smart, they will not form any risk in the battle whatsoever. Like, they will not go outside the gate, they will not be in, uh, in reaching length of any hero of pi PIP until they get 20. And their positioning is perfect here. They yeah. force the Immortal back, or the Punisher back, and they just start to blow it up very quickly. Starfall in a, in a great location. This should actually allow them to get the keep, which is a huge play here for Pirates. Yeah. Uh, they actually reached level 20 first simultaneously. So, yeah, that was huge. And they should disengage now. A 20 versus 20 when there's nothing else to be gained in this lane. They already got the keep. Excellently done by Pirates. Yeah, but Apathur has been pushing with his Fallen Shaman, so as much as it's a big deal for that Pirates got that keep, this top keep is now very much exposed. Yeah, and if they can actually prevent Heartstoning here... Oh, the Apathur the, mines! The nest! Narrowly cancelled Smexy -si Styles Hearthstone. And it's just Tyrande here to defend, and she's actually got some of the worst lane clear in the yeah. game, throwing out Hunter's Mark on that Fallen Shaman. But the Abathur Hat is tr doing his best to keep it alive as long as possible. Keep going to go down to about half health right now. I would have liked to see Ziku blocking the stab damage there. She was not standing in front of the stab from Abathur. Got a little bit more damage from the keep there than was absolutely necessary. Okay, well, both teams just showing the emphasis here for that global presence. Five to seven in terms of takedowns in favor of Na'Vi. Sentinel will scout out the location of a few members. Now the only point left on the map which is uh, calling anyone's attention, the pot of honey under the rainbow, is that siege giant there at the bottom. But uh, all teams know that this is uh, a point that people could be contesting. It's risky to go for it. Neither are actually doing that. Lunar Flare, oh, sorry, the Sentinel now revealing that for PIP. Well, we've got a very safe rotation to the top for Na'Vi. Might get uh, Eric there. Yeah, you're not going to see something like Judgment used to take out a Lost Viking. Really not worth it in these situations, but Zeratul blinking in does give the takedown. Yeah. Uh, he's not going to be back up for this fight yet. Longboat Raid will have the full DPS of a two-man Viking. Uh, but less health. But less health. Yeah. So Easier to burst down. Positional advantage here for Na'Vi as PIP arriving a bit late. Needs to make sure they don't clump up. Look for Eternal and Zeratul there to make the big place with Void Prison flanking there so he doesn't get revealed too easily. These Amethyr Mines are just so useful in these situations when you're setting up for these fights, especially when you consider Zeratul that can dive into the back line. But they do find him early, don't manage to set up the second stun in this team fight. So Zeratul slips away in a very early Starfall, going to get a lot of skulls picked up on the side of Pirates. And it gives a bit of breathing room, allowed him to spread out in the midsection. They've got to be careful now. Right now is when they're grouped up. He could potentially get three people in the Void Prison. They're starting to split out a little bit more and only two get caught. Oh, but the Ring of Frost does go down. So much damage being thrown on Tyrande. And the Ancestral Hill will not connect. Yeah, the Ancestral was too late. And they will have a massive advantage here. Navi taking down everybody with relative ease. Once again, the Void Prison Ring of Frost being successful there. Longboat Raid putting out a lot of damage, however. Taking down Uther, but keep in mind, he will be coming back. Yeah, he has redemption, that level 20 talent. The double Jaina is no more because the clone has expired, but Zeratul going in with the Abther hat is just as formidable, and that will be a Punisher picked up by a Pirate. Okay. But the team fight is going to go the way of Na'Vi. Yeah, with Uther coming back, they have zero people down at the moment. Two and a half people down, if you count the Viking for PIP. They have the consolation prize of getting the Punisher, but unless JPL is extremely careless, nobody should be dying to this here. And even Baylock going down now. Yeah, losing Vikings left and right is like, it's not the biggest of deals, but it's not what you want to have happen in these late game situations. You want to maximize that split push, especially when you have those catapults already in the bottom lane. Just try to push it forward a little bit more if you can. So boss doing a bit of siege damage, maybe getting 10% off of the keep. And that's about it. Yeah, uh, not the biggest of deals, but the wall is down. I mean, the Goat Boys, the Khazor camp have really just powered through uh, this wall in the back line while they were dealing with the Punisher. And now we see even more camps being picked up by Pirates in Pajamas. Yeah, very ambitious uh, capture here by Smexy Style and Zypho, getting the Siege Giants there. They're not going to do any damage, don't worry. It's more just stealing it from the opponent, right? And that's a great thing to do, especially if you have Merc Lord, right? If they decide to ignore that for even a little while and you can throw Eric in there to try to get dis additional push with that, that's great. They're just buying so much control on the battleground right now, Grubby. Yeah. 
And actually, whether you are level 21, the opponent is 22, it's not too big of a deal. They're actually very close in XP, but at this point, it doesn't matter too, too much anymore. So with that entire fight in the middle, actually nothing happened. Nobody lost any buildings. <laughs> right. <laughs> no big level disparities. So it was quite balanced, which is interesting, since most takedowns were on Navi's side. All right. Well, Navi trying to get some map control themselves. They picked up that Khazar camp up in the top lane. But now they still have to continue responding. The Khazar is over down here in the bottom. Very alive, very healthy, and Catapult will be joining them, so this has to be taken care of. Now, Jake, PIP, how do they approach the next fight? It's very defensive to think just don't group up, just don't get hit by the VP. They had relative success having only two people in the Void Prison instead of four. Hmm. But then Toronto walked in and got hit by Ring of Frost anyway, and Cesar was too late. So how do you solve this conundrum? I think uh, one of the big stories a lot of these fights is every single fight Ancestral has been too late. At the start of the fights, they're losing a hero early. The Ancestral is almost getting off, but not quite there. If they can just predict that a little bit sooner, when they see the Zeratul Blink, and start the Ancestral immediately, because they can anticipate the damage is going to be coming through that Zeratul, yeah. and just try to respond in that way. Yeah, not to be too critical, but it seems like it could have been slightly faster in the last fight in the middle. Tyrande was already hit by Ring of Frost, and Ancestral then react reactively came. Okay, okay, so let's see if that Ancestral can hit their Force Maxi style. All right, that, that, Good was, split. that was an Uther clone. So that is going to be the clone on cooldown for quite a while. The ultimate evolution for Aptor not available here. This is a big deal. We have, last, in the last fight, we had the double jam. The Strafe is doing so much damage to the back line, but they stop it with the Void Prison. Not the best Void Prison as his own Tyrael is oh. stuck there. Ring of Frost misses. This is huge. Yeah, that is a big deal. Alex Lepergy taking a ton of damage. A longboat raid getting full efficiency, forcing them all to disengage Splendor. Quite low Alex Lepergy as well. And that is going to be another Punisher picked up for Pirates. They are turning this around in their favor, Grubby. Yes, they certainly are, Jake. As uh, Hardened Shield was used, uh, Evolution was used, Void Prison kind of whiffed, Ring of Frost whiffed. They have nothing left. Uh oh. Uh, Lunar oh, Flare. Oh, Smexy! Incestual and heal oh. does get off this time, and now Divine Shield is forced out. Zeratul trying to turn this around, but the Punisher has joined the fray. That is going to be another takedown. Tyrael has fallen in battle. The explosion not enough for a kill, and the Punisher will make his way to the base. Oh, Quacknix taking a lot of damage there. Smexy style trying to block the skill shots from the Evolution clone on Jaina. Managed to stay alive. Super important because the boss, very much Ooh. alive, Jake. But well, Vala! Yeah, that is <laughs> a huge deal. Losing Vala here. Splendor. With with JPL, I don't know if it's enough to defend it. Now, the boss is aggroed up here, which is great. They pulled it off the core, and now they have Eternal back in action. And this back on the style core. will go down. Oh, OK. Lots of damage here starting to happen on the core, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to finish off the game, as a lot of the heroes are down. Wow, this is really close. We have to remember the mule is there. They're going to try to take it out. Super KG in the back line doing his best. They take out Balog. The Immortal is still available. Super KG goes down, and I think they're going <laughs> to defend this. But the catapults, the catapults are adding damage. A new minion oh, wave will no. prevent the damage from being done on the core. Four <laughs> percent. <laughs> so mule has expired. It is down, but the core is still alive, and every single member on the side of pirates has fallen. You can see they look devastated right now. Oh no, with 4%, Mule still on cooldown, but Abathur is there to give it a shield. It's starting to regenerate. It already has something like 15% extra HP from the shield. And he's got Mule in just a matter of seconds. Look for it to drop down anytime now. And they're going to attack. But the two highest damage dealers for Team PIP, they are right here. Vala, Toronto. Can they hold the fort quite literally and figuratively as well? Ooh, this is going to be really tight now. It's not a big window. I mean, this is good, but if they if they fall in their push here, this will be lights out for Navi. But they're doing the rest. They're going in for the core. JPL taking a ton of damage, forcing out the ice block in the back line. Strafe was already used. Divine Shield, and they're just throwing every bit of damage they have at the core. Navi trying to hit Void Prison, connecting on two targets. A massive play. Wow, the Void Prison there. They definitely have enough damage and stay, staying power. Navi clinches the series in a wow. nail-biting 